What's going on, ladies and gents? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com. Danny Vega, Keto Counterculture. That's right. Now, I've had several of y'all request me to bring back the Keto Savage Kitchen. Normally, it's Crystal standing here beside me, but I got a much furrier <laughs> partner this time. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring back the Keto Savage Kitchen, but it's gonna be a little different this time. This is gonna be like primal edition. Right. I feel like with, with keto, I talked about this on the podcast that we recorded today. Like if you eat a lot of meat, it's only it only makes sense for you to be okay with where that meat comes from. Like it kinda goes hand in hand. Like if you eat meat, then you need to be accepting of where that meat comes from. Yep. Danny just had a fir- his first successful deer hunt, killed a deer, super proud of him. Super clean shot. The deer didn't feel a thing. Dropped instantly. Killed humanely. Killed appropriately. Well placed shot. Now we have that said deer lying next to us here. We figured for this keto savage kitchen, we're gonna make it the primal edition. We're gonna show you how to skin that deer, quarter that deer, field dress that deer, cook that deer. That way you can legitimately take an, a wild animal from start to finish and know how to process it and eat it. That's what. I mean, it doesn't get any more manly and primal and primitive and, and just, like, legit than that. Agreed? Yep. 100%. I mean, if you're okay with eating meat, you need to know where it comes from. And I think there's nothing better than actually harvesting your own meat. Yep. And knowing how to do that, that's a skill that I think everyone should learn. And now I can say that I've learned it. So I'm really excited to share this with all of you guys, you know. That, yep. And we're going we're gonna to do it. What are we going to do, a sampler? Sampler platter? Yeah, we'll probably... Last night we, we wrapped the tenderloins in the backstrap and bacon. We don't have any bacon tonight, so we'll just like, we'll cook some tenderloin, we'll cook some backstrap, we'll probably cook some of the, the quarter or something like that. But I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna show, I'm gonna teach Danny how to do the cuts and everything, and I'm gonna let him do most of the cuts, and I'll try and walk y'all through it as we go. So let's dive in. All right. Let me preface this Keto Savage Kitchen episode with if you are squeamish at the sight of blood, if you don't like seeing animals that have been like killed, you might want to skip the next video in the series because this is going to be like unedited raw footage of like legitimately what happens when you kill a deer. So let's just dive in and take it from there. One more little caveat, y'all. First thing first, make sure you have a very sharp knife. I have been using these Outdoor Edge Razor Light knives with the interchangeable replaceable blade. So you basically just put the new blade in there and you have a surgical blade, like instantly sharp as you go. So you don't have to worry about sharpening your knife. So I've been liking these. All right, I'm putting, I'm about to string them up so that I can basically, what do we, how do we call this, quartering them? Yeah. Make sure he's, that rope's on the other side of his ear. Oh yeah. Let's see that. All right, perfect. This just allows us to get to him. So I'm gonna go all the way around the neck, right? Yep, you wring the neck. Basically just cut, not through the meat, but through the hide. Check out that wristband though. (laughs) (laughs) I've been taking it off in over a year. All right, so now that the neck has been wrung, you wanna make an insertion right here at the sternum. Okay. And basically split up to the cut in the neck. Does it matter if I cut it down or up? It's probably easy if you cut it up because then you can kind of separate it as you go. Now you want to make like a, a ring around just above the knee and then up the leg. Okay. It's getting hair everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try not to get hair everywhere. This guy's a newbie. <laughs> Danny's learning. It's funny, I've watched this so many times and I still, nothing like doing it. All right, so I'm con- I'm connecting this. Yeah, try and hold the knife in reverse, like. This way? No, other way, like basically, like hold it like that. Oh, okay, okay. And split up. And basically connect that cut to the cut you made in the sternum. All right, so once you make those cuts, you can basically just pull the hide down. And it'll come off of the shoulders and the neck and throughout the body. And you can kind of, any connective tissue or fascia tissue that's holding it, you can just cut as you go. 
All right, that is what it looks like with the hide off. This is a good time to spray it with a hose to get all the hair off. Yep, spray my hands too so I don't get more hair on it. All right, so now's the part where it's gonna get a little squeamish. So if you're like sensitive stomach, probably shouldn't watch this part, but we're basically gonna cut into the the, the abdominal cavity basically and, and gut the deer. So we're gonna rip all the guts out of it so that we, we can clean the deer, clean the interior of the deer without any kind of guts. That way we can just quarter the meat and have everything clean and processed as we go. And basically you wanna make an insertion Kind of, I, I like to start right at the sternum okay. and then work down, or you could work up, but yeah, cut right up the sternum bone. Sternum's right here. Yep. Him. And then when you start to go into, like when you get past that sternum, okay, you see where there's no bone there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to cut too deep, or you'll puncture the uh, the intestines and the organs and whatnot. So you want to kind of hold the the skin out as you cut into it basically. Okay. I get all the way to the bottom? I gotta go a little bit more. Yeah, go all the way to the bottom. Okay. Now you wanna go all the way to the top too. Sometimes with a young deer you can just cut through the sternum with the knife, but uh, since that's a not a super sturdy knife we're gonna use the limb loppers and cut up. Oh, okay. So basically just split the sternum up with these. Here, I'll hold them. I didn't see this part when you did it. Yeah, so, so yep, just go in there. Yep, and just split up the sternum. Perfect. So now, you can basically spread that sternum open And then we can, let's see, what did you take? I think you took out the entire heart, basically. Yeah, yeah look at that. So Almost basically good. what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the knife blade, go up and cut off the trachea and esophagus, and then pull everything else down. Cut the diaphragm out and pull everything else down. All right, so come from here. Yeah, basically you're gonna, you wanna like stick your hand up into the chest cavity. Okay. And you're gonna wanna cut the trachea and esophagus. This is easier if I'm helping you, so I'm gonna try and set the camera down and help you hold. I think I got it. Oh no, wait. Grab that with your hands, okay. not your knife, and just pull everything down. Okay. You're all good. All right, so we've basically just pulled everything out. We cut the diaphragm, cut the esophagus and the tracheal, uh, trachea, and then we just pulled everything out. It's all hanging there. So then we go around to the anus of the deer, basically, and then we cut out around the tail, and then all that other stuff will just fall out. So, yeah, basically you don't want to cut into any of the, the muscle. That's all food. So. You can kind of see where it gets soft. You basically just want to cut in there. Yeah, perfect. And you just cut around the anus with that. All right, so now the deer's been gutted. The deer's been skinned, skinned then gutted. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically use the limb loppers to cut off the foreleg uh, where, there's, where the skin's still on, where the hoofs and everything are, because there's no meat on there. We don't need that. We go above the uh, knee? Just preference. All right, now we're gonna start quartering him and he's gonna teach me how to do that. <laughs> All right, so the front legs are the easiest because there's no, there's no bone, there's no ball and socket joint. You're basically just cutting around the shoulder blade and then everything else falls off. I like to basically start from the inside, okay. make the incision up top, and then just cut down and just follow the shoulder blade. You can kind of like pull the leg away as you're cutting and you'll see where it all lies. Yeah. Very big learning experience for me. So right here? Yep, yep. And just save as much meat as you can there. This isn't necessarily graceful with Danny no. being it the first time, but yeah. it's effective at least. <laughs> yeah. Still gonna be delicious. All right. Products. So that is the front leg shoulder. 
Now the next we have the hindquarters and there's a, a ball and socket joint in there so you want to cut around that and basically cut right at the ball and socket joint. Okay. I saw you do this yesterday but I'm still probably gonna... And you want to leave as much meat, cut as close to the tail on the back side as possible so you're not wasting any meat there. So right here? Yep. Socket right there. Alright, so there is the ball and socket joint and basically you want to just pull the leg back enough to be able to get that connected tissue yep and then once you get that it just comes right off boom that's the hind quarter the hammy I'm big chunk of meat man pound this and make it into a little chicken box steak all right so now the front legs and the hind legs are off if you look it's kind of dark try and get out of the light there if you could danny all right if you see that Those are the tenderloins. And again, it's kind of dark, but those are the tenderloins. So we're going to cut those out. Sorry, I was totally There they wrong. go. Those on each side, tenderloins, we're going to cut those out. And then that is what we're going to grill tonight. All right, so tenderloins are out. The only thing left is the back strap. If this was a bigger deer, we could roll the neck and get some of the meat off the neck. But there's not really any meat on the neck of this deer. It looks like there is, but there's really not since it's, it's such a young deer. But on the back strap, all you have to do, let's here, roll, roll them to me a little bit, Danny, is first get all this like fascia tissue off uh, and get to the back strap underneath. Right. Yeah, just cut all that off there. All right, so now that all of that excess is out and the back straps are exposed, basically all you have to do is we'll make a vertical cut. We'll make a vertical cut down the entire length of the backbone on one side and then we'll come again perpendicular to that right on top of the rib cage okay so here's all right so that's basically what the back strap looks like it's the muscle that goes right down the length of the back the lumbars basically and that is delicious so good when smoked So you see where it came from there. And we'll do the exact same thing the other side here. Okay. All right. So All right so what do we me. got here, Danny? Bear with me. It's not the cleanest <laughs> job, but it's my first time. So we got our two back straps. We have our two tenderloins, our uh, two shoulders, and our two quads. A piece of butt. A piece of butt that Danny missed on the quads. <laughs> now let's clean it, wash it down and we'll throw it on the grill. All right, so now everything's been quartered. We're gonna wash it off the clean water. We got our back straps, tenderloins, quads, uh, shoulders, etc., etc. We're gonna marinate the tenderloins in this Primal Kitchen avocado oil. We're pretty hungry, so it's not gonna be marinating for very long, but it's still gonna be delicious. So yes, it is. that's what we're doing now. All right, so there's no meat tenderizer in the cabin. So I washed the butt of this axe handle, and we're gonna use that instead. While he's beating that, we got our tenderloins marinating, and our back strap, we're gonna season that. Yeah. Look at like that beauty. Stick. Like a skirt stick. We're seasoning with some good old slap your mama. All right, so our charcoals are ready. Get this grill rolling. Oh yeah. Beautiful. I'm excited to eat, man. Dude, so am I. Took a little longer today because I'm not as experienced on the uh, butchering, but. Yeah, this still tastes good. Oh, it'll taste better. <laughs> So here's Danny's first bite of his own deer. Oh my gosh, bro. Pretty good? I'm gonna eat so good. Tastes mm. so much better when you killed it, huh? So good, man. So good? Mm, I can't wait to eat the whole thing. <laughs> Boom, y'all, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful platter of back strap and tenderloin. You excited? Ooh, that's the butt, I forgot that's the butt. Which one? Right there. Yeah, this one, that's the butt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
It's gonna be delicious. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my first bites of Danny's Deer Keto Savage Kitchen Primal Edition. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Like angels dance on tip of your tongue. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah, wait to try. Hold on, I, I gotta take a picture too. <laughs> My first deer. Oh, this is perfectly done, man. What do you think? Dad and mm. gone to heaven? Mmm. The butter. Oh, that, that takes it next level. So we did buttered backstrap, uh, Primal Kitchen marinated um, tenderloin, and what are we gonna call this uh, this little piece of the butt? Buttered butt. <laughs> buttered butt. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Well, wow, the butt is amazing. Butt is amazing. I have a feeling this is gonna be my favorite. Cause tenderloin? Yeah, it's 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 medium rare, and it's been marinating in that primal kitchen. Mm. That's the one. Yeah. And that concludes this episode of the Keto Savage Kitchen Primal Edition. Let me know if you like more of these episodes, and I'll definitely keep them coming. I apologize to any of you who were offended. Actually, I don't really apologize. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, but I gave a, a warning beforehand. Did not mean to make anything look gruesome. It's just the reality of what happens out here when you kill an animal, you process the animal, you eat the animal. And it tastes so good. See y'all next time.